This is the 5 a.m. Miracle, episode number 440. Just show up. How doing the easy stuff is 80% of the battle. Good morning and welcome to the 5 a.m. Miracle. I am Jeff Sanders and this is the podcast dedicated to dominating your day before breakfast. My goal is to help you bounce out of bed with enthusiasm create powerful, lifelong habits, and tackle your grandest goals with extraordinary energy. In the episode this week, I'll break down why showing up is the answer to just about everything, how most of your work is not nearly as hard as you imagine, and how you can climb Mount Everest, literally or metaphorically, and achieve the biggest goals of your life. Here we go. So a few weeks ago at the gym, I had this really clear realization that I just didn't want to be there. You know those feelings? Like you show up somewhere and you have this thought that's usually pretty obvious, which is, wait a minute, yeah, I showed up here, but I don't really want to be here. So I considered leaving, but I stayed and I finished the workout even though I was not in the mood. But that got me thinking. Why does anyone ever actually do anything? Why do we start things? Why do we finish things? Why do we engage in things at all? You know, how is the process of doing something, anything, moved from step to step, especially on those days when the obstacles are everywhere and motivation is nowhere? Well, it's simple, really. You just show up anyway. You already know how this works because you have done this before countless times. You know, whenever I begin a new habit or a workout program or a new project or a new business venture, there is only ever one goal in mind. Just show up. Nothing more, nothing less. Because I know that if I just show up, I give the magic a chance to do its thing. And by magic, I mean muscle memory, past experience, social influence, or really every other factor that will influence us to move. All right, magic is movement. Movement is showing up. Just being there to do your thing, even poorly, is better than doing nothing at all. So let's break this down today. Let's talk about what it means to show up. Let's talk about what it means to do the easy stuff, to build momentum, to start a snowball effect, to actually tackle these larger projects, and then eventually get to the harder things that we actually are mentally avoiding, but that causes us to stop doing anything at all. In other words, the fear of these projects being too difficult will actually cause us to stop in our tracks and pursue 0% of the thing we could do so much of. So let's get to this. Just show up how doing the easy stuff is 80% of the battle. Let's begin with what it means to show up. You know, when I go to the gym, I'm at the gym. And the challenge is not the workout itself. This is the common misconception about showing up. We think that showing up means we're physically at a place or mentally at a place, we become present, and then we engage in the activity. But here's the key thing about showing up. The engagement is a side effect of showing up. Doing the workout in this example, or lifting the weights, or going for the run, or doing your session of yoga, whatever the thing is you're doing, the activity is a byproduct of first being present in the environment where the work gets done. Showing up means walking in the door. It means, yes, you're in the trenches. Yes, you're at the gym. Yes, your book is open and ready to study. Yes, you woke up and got out of bed at 5 a.m. on time yet again. Yes, you put on your outfit. You're ready to perform. Showing up means you are in motion and have started the process. You are doing the work and not the actual activity yet, the pre-work that gets you to the activity. Showing up is pre-work and it's extremely important it is the foundation that leads to the work itself and if that work is done the pre-work that is then the activity is a no-brainer and that's what we're going for is the simple step-by-step methodology of acknowledging that when we show up the rest of what needs to happen will just happen on its own And that, in effect, is the magic. It's the muscle memory. It's the past experience. All those other influences that cause movement and motion, 
Well, all of those are kicked into gear by you showing up. So in this process, we're not talking about thinking or planning or looking forward to things. We are actively talking about being in the trenches of doing the pre-work and the work itself to go somewhere. Now, yes, you can make a very strong argument. I have in this podcast before that planning is a huge part of the process. That is true. But in this context, we are talking about showing up to plan. We're talking about showing up to do even that step itself, which could be the pre pre work, (laughs) whatever it is. It's the first step, right? Showing up is step number one. And the question becomes, how is this more possible for you, especially in the areas of your life where you're not showing up? Those areas where you know, I've got an opportunity here. There's something I could do here to bring my whole self to this project. And I just haven't. I didn't show up in the past. I haven't shown up before, but I want to, and I'm ready to. So let's imagine that you are engaged in this process and you want to begin showing up. You want to begin doing the difficult work. Well, when most of us think about a project or a difficult challenge coming up, let's use the gym once again as an example. We imagine most of the time the most difficult scenario possible, right? Our minds take us to worst case scenarios. And so if we imagine going to the gym and we haven't been going for a long time, well, we may imagine, well, wait a minute, I'm out of shape. I feel kind of flabby. I look bad in the mirror. If I go to the gym, it's going to hurt. I'm going to be sore. I won't be able to lift the weights I have before. And these are all just excuses. They're all just obstacles in our own minds because what we're imagining are those worst case scenarios. We're imagining the most difficult aspects of what it means to do the activity. And yes, those difficult things are still going to be there. We're still going to get sore. We're still going to have those days. We don't want to do it. Yes, those are all true. However, as I referenced in the title episode this week, 80% of this battle is actually very easy. And the last 20% a little more challenging. So for now, we're actually going to ignore the challenging part. Because there's always something that seems difficult in every pursuit. So for now, if we ignore what sounds challenging, ignore the fears, ignore worst case scenarios, forget all the noise, we can then focus in on what actually matters now. I'll give you an example from this podcast. So every single week, I have to go through a whole process to bring this show to life. And that includes everything from show notes on the website to an email promotion to scripting the episode itself, recording, post-production, editing, publishing, marketing. The list goes on. Podcasting is a lot to do. But in the pre-work process, before I actually hit record, there's a lot of stuff involved to plan the episode. And you might imagine that when I plan an episode of this podcast, I have a really clear idea of the topic and all the little points I'm going to make in between, and that the concept is fully thought out before I commit to it. Wrong. (laughs) It's actually the exact opposite. What I tend to do is get an idea, a, a simple concept like showing up, and then I'll go through the process of show notes and an email and putting all those structural pieces together, but the actual core content, the scripting of the episode, is the last thing I do before I hit record. So the meat of the episode, the core of what it is, isn't thought out until the very last minute. And you may be thinking, well, isn't that backwards? Why are you doing the most important parts at the very end? And the answer is because that's what I want to procrastinate on. (laughs) That's the honest answer is that that actually is for podcasting, for me, the most difficult aspect of all of this. Scripting is the hardest part of all the things I mentioned. So what I do in this step of ignoring the hard stuff is that I take the scripting aspect and I make it last, which means I'm doing all the other work first. All the prep work, the structural thinking, the brainstorming, all these other things are happening beforehand. So by the time I get to the hard stuff later, it's not as difficult, which we'll get to in a little more detail here in just a minute. But for now, let's use that as an example here that there are difficult parts of these processes, and oftentimes we can ignore those doing the easy stuff first, which brings us to the next step, defining what's easy and doable right now. So once again, with a podcast episode, I have defined what's easy and doable for me. It's easy for me to do an email or show notes or to put together, you know, other segments that I want to do do later on. I have defined the easy for me. 
So for your project, for your goal, what's the easy stuff? What's super simple? What is so easy you can't ignore it because you could just do it right now? Like what would give you that quick win? Those are the things that are going to push you forward because that's the stuff that's going to build that momentum. That's the snowball effect. That's the stuff that's going to get you engaged in the process, doing things, checking boxes, making things happen that are productive, that are efficient, that are effective for your goal. And when those things happen, well, then now you're in motion. You're, you've, already, you've already shown up, right? You've already shown up because you're doing the steps. And that's the whole point. We're trying to avoid in all of this is procrastination, is avoiding the fear and the stagnation and the deer in the headlights look of, oh, no, there's a lot here. I'm just going to stand here and do nothing. That's what we're trying to avoid. We want to be the kinds of people who are actively moving forward. Showing up and moving are the same thing. And that's the goal. Now, the next step after you have identified what's easy to do is to take that one step further and clarify what the easy habits are. And specifically, easy habits meaning what is easy to repeat over and over again. Because a quick win that's a one-time thing is good, but it can be a lot better if there are quick wins that are repeated. Those things that provide that compound effect of success and exponential growth over time. So if you're a little bit afraid of how to get started or unsure of yourself, well, you start with what's easy. But then you go with what's easy and repeatable and you get even more success, even more progress being made. And then the next step, we're looking for what I call a trigger step. Now, a trigger step is kind of the core of what it means to show up. The trigger step is the thing that takes you from inaction to action. So with the clarifying your easy habits on anything that's repeated, like going to the gym every day or going to work every day or engaging in your next project yet again tomorrow and the next day. All of these things have a trigger step, which is the very first thing that causes the motion to happen. So let's take the gym once again as an example. You might imagine the trigger step for working out at the gym is lifting the first weight. No. Or maybe it's walking in the front door of the gym. No. Well, maybe it's driving to the gym. Also, no. The trigger step is putting on your workout clothes because that's probably your very first step. Now, unless you're going to drive from work to the gym and change clothes later, okay, fine. But for most of us, there's a very first step that we take. And that very first step is the thing that says, I was doing something else. And then I transitioned into the next activity. And the very first thing you do that is now acknowledging the next activity is happening, that first step is your trigger step. So it could be you put on your gym clothes. It could be you turn on focus music. It could be you put on your headphones. Like Whatever the thing is, you know what that first thing is, that trigger step that causes everything else to just happen, right? It's the domino effect. You push that first domino and boom, things happen one after the other after the other. And if you can begin that process for yourself, especially on these important habits and important goals, because you know the trigger step and you can activate that intentionally, on purpose, when you need to, well, then you're already in the game. So now let's imagine that you've done the easy stuff. You have easy habits established. You know your trigger steps. You're actually engaged in the process and you've done 80% of the battle. You did all the easy stuff because it was easy, right? That's why we do it. Well, now you're at the last 20%, which is the hard stuff. And the question then becomes, well, what do we do with that hard stuff at the end? Because you could say, well, once again, I'm going to procrastinate. Once again, I'm going to hold off on taking action. But here's the funny thing. If you've done the first 80%, you have built momentum. You have done so much work already, that last 20% doesn't seem nearly as difficult. So once again, back to the gym again, we imagine in the beginning, the worst case scenario that the hardest part of the gym might be uh, public embarrassment. It might be looking bad in the mirror. It might be feeling sore after working out. Well, if you've already put on your gym clothes, you already went to the gym, you already began to work out, you did the easy stuff, right? You're doing some light walking, you're doing some simple yoga, lifting very light weights. You did the easy part of the workout. 
Well, you're already now sweating. You're in the gym. You're focused. Your headphones are on. The music is bumping. You've done the work that's required to set you up to now lift that bigger weight, to now push yourself into that final 20% to say, okay, now I'm ready. I did all the prep work. I built the foundation. So now all I have to do is that thing I came here to do. It looks hard from the start line, but the finish line looks so much easier when you're already three-fourths of the way done. So that's the process here. It's you build the momentum, you do the easy stuff, the hard stuff then not so hard after all. Now, throughout this entire process of showing up for your work, there is a tendency to get distracted, right? We all have obstacles. We all have things that will throw us off of our path. And the real key to all of this is always intense focus. Now, it doesn't really mean intense focus in the extreme nature of I have to block out every distraction endlessly. I love those ideas. I I focus on that. I focus on focus all the time and I love it. But you don't have to be that intense. All you actually have to do is acknowledge what the next step is and then very methodically and logically plan to do it. It's on the calendar. It's on your task list. It's right in front of you. In other words, you've made the next step easy. So it's one thing to say that you have a list of easy activities. It's another to say you've actually done the pre-work to make the next easy step even easier. In other words, what we're always doing throughout the entire process is we're staying laser focused on the next step and asking that question, how do I make this easy? How do I get started now? How do I delay delaying myself? How do I procrastinate on procrastination, right? How do I just do it now? So focus and the easy steps are really just ways of asking, how do I get involved in this next moment? How do I start that process today, here and now? What I have found over the years is that when I have something that I care about, a a big project, it's all consuming, which is really what I'm trying to get to here. Focus means that it is your thing, that it's not just some, you know, an hour block of time where you're going to do one thing, but it actually is all that you're focused on. It is the entirety of what you're trying to accomplish. Now, in my business as an entrepreneur, I tend to pick one big project and I'll put my whole life into it. I'll take all of my time, my energy, my money, my resources, everything that's laser focused to one project. And the cool part here is when that happens, when focus is baked into the process, showing up is super easy because you're already there. It's just around you. You're in the environment that you built to make that possible. So focus, motion, momentum, all these things are easy then because it is all that you're doing and you get more creativity, you get more ideas, you get more enthusiasm for all the future steps you're going to take. But once you're actively in the thing, well, the thing is all consuming. It takes over what you're trying to do. And this can happen in a grander sense, like in a big season of life for three or four months, or it can be in three or four hours in a focus block session where you're getting yourself brainstorming and working and and being creative. Like these can be in small sessions or big ones, but it's the same thing that's happening. You're letting yourself be consumed to focus, make it simple, and just keep moving. Now for my final point on the episode this week, I want to make sure that I make one thing fairly clear, which is that showing up itself is a habit. We have to keep showing up for all of our projects here and in the future. It's one thing to say, well, I showed up before, so therefore I can do it again. Well, not necessarily. Success itself is a daily decision. Yes, you can build good habits. Yes, you can have discipline. Yes, you can have systems that reinforce what you want to do. But it's a daily choice. You know, my podcast has been around for almost nine years now. And I publish a new episode every Monday morning without fail. That's what I chose to do nine years ago. And that's what I keep doing. In other words, I keep showing up even without a solid idea on the content, even without, you know, rock star content that's going to blow away the podcasting world. Right. Ideally, that's possible. Right. Ideally, that's what happens. But in reality, I'm just asking myself, how can I show up again and hopefully push myself 1% further, 1% better 
Just keep pushing myself a little more. Showing up means, yes, I'm physically here. I'm mentally present. I have all the things I need to do the job, to do the work. But I also want to see some growth. I want to see personal improvement over time. And so the opportunity with showing up in the beginning, it's just to create motion. It's to create movement. It's to say, I'm now doing a thing I wasn't doing before. I'm here. But as this process continues down the road, showing up changes into what it means. Now it's no longer the question of will I show up, it's when I show up, can I show up better? Can I up my game? And that becomes the challenge for anyone who's done anything for any length of time. We always have that natural desire to improve when it's something we care about, when we're invested in it. So if you're in that stage now with a project, you've been showing up, that's the easy part for you now. Well, then your next challenge is to show up 1% better, to take yourself a little further each and every day and let that compound effect take over over time. And then all of a sudden, nine years from now, you may have an exponentially better end result. That's the goal. And for the action step this week, show up for your next thing. Identify the easy steps you can complete without any hard work, critical thinking, or motivation. Just pick the low-hanging fruit and let that be your jumpstart into movement. Showing up is all that's required for so many things in life. Just show up. JeffSanders.com slash 440 is the place to go for the episode notes. And of course, subscribe to this podcast at JeffSanders.com slash subscribe or use the app you're using right now. That's all I've got for you here on the 5 a.m. Miracle Podcast this week. Until next time, you have the power to change your life, and the fun begins bright and early.